This video is sponsored by Action VFX. Hey, what's up? In today's video, I will show you how I've created the robot arms from Doc Ock. So let's see how I've done that. All right, first of all, Happy New Year. It's been a crazy year. In this video, I will recreate the arms from Doc Ock. To recreate this scene, I will need to do the following. Model the complete arm structure and texture it realistically. I also want to add in smoke so it actually looks real. And I want to create an entire CGI exterior scene so I can do all that. I'm also going to record myself against a green screen and then place these arms all around me and placing myself in a CGI shop. So yeah, that's quite a lot. I did try different techniques to achieve this effect and none of them seemed to work until this last one, which I will be sharing in this video. All right, so the first thing that I've done is searched a lot of reference for the Doc Ock arms. So I started modeling this in Cinema 4D. I tried to keep everything as modular as possible so I can usually really cheat my way using primitives and deformers to achieve my final model. So here is the speed art of me doing that. All right, so while I'm modeling my arm, I'm going to move into the green screen room and record myself for the second shot that we're going to be doing once the arms are done. Here, I simply made sure that my green screen is lit separately from myself and I made myself look like I have a side sunlight just like Doc Ock in this shot right here. Hello, Peter. I tried to match the lighting for an outdoor scene. Now that we have recorded that, let's get back to the robotic arm and we can see that now it's completely finalized. For the claws, I used a cloner and this allows me to open the claws whenever I want. So I'm just using the transform options in the cloner to animate my grab animation. I could link this with an expressive system, but why for just one shot, you know? <laughs> then for the entire arm, you only need one module modeled. So that's only this one part. The first thing that I tried is duplicating this one part multiple times times until I have the length of my arm I wanted and then I played around with the joints in Cinema 4D to rig this with a joint system. I then placed every single module in every different joint so it actually ends up bending like this. And this got me pretty decent results but it didn't give me a lot of control. I couldn't make the arm longer than I wanted to, I couldn't add in more segments all of a sudden which in the end it might be more realistic but in the movie I also noticed that once in a while the arms are a lot longer than in other shots so I wanted to have the option to make a longer arm or a shorter arm depending on my shot so I couldn't work with this technique. Back to the brainstorm table. So again I was thinking how can I make this in the most efficient way possible let's say I want to change something in the future what is going to allow me doing that so here is what I've done I used a cloner with my one module and then I drew a spline that I then plugged into the object for my cloner so now my object is cloning among the spline here it's very important to have enough subdivisions and play around with your spline types to get a desired result also set your cloner to even so your module is distributed evenly amongst the spline. So now I have two separate things. I have the arm, which is kind of like an iron snake, and then I have the grabbler, which is also a separate object. So now I want it to slam in the ground. So I want to animate this arm. So for the arm itself, I use the end parameter right here in the cloner. This allows me to start and end my cloning, and it will just follow along that spline. So just animating this value will give me something like this. But this doesn't work for the grabbler, because that's already in a cloner on its own and we only need one copy of this. So I didn't use a cloner but for this one I used an align to spline. And again the same thing you can also use the start and end here and animate those. Just try to match these two keyframes up so both the arm and the grabbler are actually matching up in timing when it slams into the ground. That looks really cool now for the ground slamming. 
Cinema 4D is really awesome because it has a tool called Ponoroy Fracture and it's a really insane tool because you have so many options in there and if you take it a step further above the basic level of Ponoroy Fracture you will see that you have so much customizability and you can also enable detailing and really customize the entire look non-destructively and that's what I really love about Cinema. So I just made a cube, added the Ponoroy Fracture to it and just played around with all the settings until I got something like this. Then I used a sphere and enabled dynamics on that sphere and also for the Vonoroy fracture. I just made the sphere slam on the same time as the grappler onto the Vonoroy to fake it like the grappler is actually entering the ground. I'm not using that as the dynamics because it has too much detail in the model and that would just crash the entire thing, I guess. I also used a bridge model in the background just to increase the details of my scene. I just wanted to do a full CGI shot for once and not use real footage from outside and see how far I could take it. As far as texturing goes, I used Octane Render Engine, so if you're interested in that, you can always join the Epic VFX Academy. I literally teach VFX from A to Z, so whether you're a beginner or a pro, you're definitely going to find a lot of value there. I will put a link in the description for that. Alright, so once you have all this, now you could potentially use a smoke simulator to make the impact smoke of the arm but it got a little bit complicated because my scene was already pretty heavy and I was just thinking again how can I make this more simple and I found a more simple technique to do this and still get insane looking results and that's where today's video sponsor Action VFX comes in. Action VFX is a stock footage website that provides premium quality stock footage elements for VFX artists. Whether it's explosions, fire, smokes, anything that is action related, you will find it there. And it's also recorded in very high quality, so it's Hollywood industry standard. And it's literally being used in series and movies all the time. And it gives you the option not to actually explode something on the moment, but do it later on in post. If you are interested in Action VFX, I will put all the information in the description, including the discount code. And let's continue with the video. So what I've done here with Action VFX is I downloaded smoke impacts, dust explosions, atmospheric fogs, and I've imported these in Adobe After Effects. Once that I have these downloaded, I'm going to set up my scene from Cinema 4D ready to render it out to Adobe After Effects using Octane Render Engine. One important multi-pass layer that I have enabled here is the Z-Depth map. And this map is going to allow me to control my smoke in my scene in Adobe After Effects. I'm also going to add a null layer to my scene in Cinema and add a compositing tag so I can export that null data and my camera back to After Effects so I have the exact position information when I want to add in smoke on a specific position in my 3D scene. So I'm playing around with all these and then start importing all my smokes in my scene in Adobe After Effects. Then you can use the Z-Depth map to really extract details to extract the depth of your scene. So then you can use the Luma mat with your fog and playing around with the effects a little bit, you can put the smoke behind something or make it come through something. And for example, when the impact hits, you can see that the smoke wraps around the stones and that's exactly what I wanted to go for so you can see depth in the scene. All right, putting everything together, that shot is now done. Now let's move on with the other shot that I have recorded in the green screen room. I'm going to import this shot as well in Adobe After Effects and use the primate gear from Red Giant to remove my background here. Once I have my background removed, I just replace the background again using smokes and atmospherics from Action VFX to make my scene more interesting, have some stuff going on there. Also, you can use their fire embers to get a little bit of a particle going on and that just adds a lot more depth and more excitingness to your scene. Once I'm pretty satisfied, I jump back into cinema and now since that I have already modeled my entire robotic arm, I don't have to do that again. All I have to do is now instead of creating one spline, is creating four different splines. Then I'm again doing the same setup with the cloner and the spline to get my arm to show. Now there is another problem. And how am I going to animate the spline so it actually looks like the arms have a little bit of life to them? It's really hard because with a joint system you can animate it but with splines, you cannot really animate the position of a spline, or can you? 
Well, there is a way. You can use the post morph tag and just enable the points mode here to morph your points into a different position. And as I only have three to four points on each spline, I can easily modify the position in the beginning and the end of my timeline and it will look like the arms actually have motion to them. And I have complete control. I can choose exactly where I want the arm to be. Then I've again exported everything in Adobe After Effects and using again the ZDEP pass, I've started to put arms in the background, put some in the foreground and also try to immerse them with the smoke and fox from Action VFX. And then adding in some sound effects and everything should give you a pretty cool result. Let's take a look. Hello, Peter. All right, so that's my final result. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a like and also be sure to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Also hit the notification bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. And apart from that, I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, create epic videos.